What's up y'all? This is Daniel with Pride of the Southland Kennels. Today we're going to be talking about the science behind dog breeding and I'm going to take you uh, behind the scenes a little bit and show you some of my in-bark um, test results that we've done. Everybody knows that they do the breed profiling. Um, to me it's more useful than that. There's a lot of information that they provide. Um, such as obviously the breed profile, the health testing, and also uh, the trait testing. So we have a breeding coming up that actually may have already taken place a little sooner than I would like between Roan and Emery. Um, I wanted to wait till her next heat cycle. That would have been uh, mid-2022. Instead, they decided um, they had other plans. So we don't know if it took yet, but if it does take, we will be testing that entire litter, and um, I'm going to get into the details of why we will be in, uh, testing that entire litter. Uh, there's probably a lot of y'all out there that are curious to, to see what um, the results look like in the format. Like I said, this is Embark. I've done some testing through Wisdom Panel. I like Embark a little bit better because of the format. It seems more user-friendly. Wisdom Panel... Um, is just not, um, I don't feel like they break it down as simple. I believe there's actually more information on Embark. Uh, they do a coefficient of inbreeding that's more useful to breeders and so on and so on. So this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like from a breeder's profile. An owner's profile or pet owner's profile will look a little bit different, but it will have the same information. Now we're on Roan's profile. We can go down here. First thing that you see is the genetic um, stats. Genetic age, 17 human years. Uh, predicted adult weight is 71 pounds. That's one of the key things for me. I've seen that to be fairly accurate. I'm not going to say they're going to guess it right to the exact pound and weight, but it does seem fairly close. So you can go down here and got his photos. And this is the area where you, you know, going to get all your information and you can open up stuff. Obviously the breed profile. <laughs> He's 100% American Bulldog. I will show you all that, even though I know that uh, <laughs> I did that just to make a few people mad. So let's go back to the traits. This is what we want to focus on. This is what the video is about. They test for several, several different traits. So we want to obviously coat color. Um, and I'm going to try not to make this video too long, but it is going to go in depth. Um, so just bear with me, I find this to be pretty interesting stuff. And before I get into it, the reason I find it to be pretty interesting stuff is because all of my dogs are over a year old, except for one. I can actually see that these test results are accurate as far as the traits go. The stuff that I can physically see that's on here, I feel is accurate, which is why I wanted to do this um, testing on this litter. And this is the stuff we're going to be looking at. Coat color is not too important, but just to show you all... Um, the E locus here, you know, this is his results, E M E M, and then it'll go through here and tell you that the E determines um, if and where a dog can produce dark, black, or brown. Dogs with two copies of the recessive E do not produce dark hairs at all and will be red. As you see, he has the dominant E's. The E M allele usually have a um, dark facial hair or mask because so he's mostly black, so that's kind of obvious there. We don't really. Not really going to pay a whole lot of attention to that. Other coat traits here. Some breeds this uh, um, is more important than others. Not necessarily with American Bulldog, but coat length. I will get into that. Um, most people assume that American Bulldogs have a short coats, and they do. Um, but there is a little bit of difference. As you can see, Roan's results were uh, GG. Um, if he had the T allele, he would have got a little bit longer fur. I do have a dog um, that had TG or GT, which is Memphis, and I go back to her to, um, to see exactly what it was. But I know she um, inherited a T, and you can actually feel the difference. It's a thicker coat. It's still considered a short coat, but it's thicker. So for me, I'm looking for that GG. Um, down here in the south, it gets a little bit hotter. Um, I feel like it's more of an advantage. Um, outside of that, I believe it, it it looks better on the dogs. 
And um, one of the things that I want to do is develop a more consistency in my phenotype. So that's why I will be utilizing these tests. Um, with that being said, the way we choose our pups out of this litter or any litter in the future that's going to be tested, um, everything will be done the exact same way up until this point. However, we will set dogs aside or pups aside that, that fit our criteria and then use these tests on top of that. It's not just using these tests, um, but doing so, I feel like we're going to be able to get to our to more of a consistent phenotype, which is something I want to do, and I believe these tests are going to help us get there sooner. So another one for me that's important is muzzle length. Um, his results were CC, so it's likely medium or long muzzle. That's what we want. Tail length is also important for me with Roan. The reason I say that with Roan is because he had a bobtail litter mate. Now, I found out exactly where that comes from and what kennel, not necessarily what exact dogs, but I know what kennel that comes from, and it's not something that I really um, value, because when I say these are bobtail dogs, the one that I seen in Roan's litter was very, very short. It doesn't even look like a dock tail. It, it, it barely is a tail at all. So you can click on that, and you can see that if he had a G allele in there which he has two copies of C um, there's a potential for him to produce bobtail pups which we didn't want to do so that was a good um, a good result for us with this dog and let's go back here all right so muzzle length is good they can I'm not going to click on that one just yet they can in here an A allele which means it could be a shorter muzzle um, so he's good on muzzle he's good on length and then we go down here to body size this is important to me too um, because they test five different genes now on this i'm not sure which one is more dominant over the other or if there was or if there is one that's more dominant on the other but what i see here from rome's test results is out of the five he has four larger and one intermediate when i go outside and look at him i can compare him to my other dogs my other american bulldogs and i do see that this accurately uh, depicts his size so i believe this this testing is um it's very accurate so it's going to be something we look for the reason we're looking at that is because i don't necessarily want large dogs i would like for my dogs to stay on the smaller side of the standard for american bulldogs so Rome, he's got you know an 80 percent chance give or take um, that he's going to turn out large and he, he will pass them genes on to his pups so as we're talking about breeding him to uh, Emery's. All right, you can see her genetic, you can see her genetic stats here. 18 years human age for her genetic age, predicted adult weight is 55 pounds, small dog. That's what we're looking for, it's small. That's, that's a very small dog, it's just under um, the standard, but I'm one of those guys, if you know, I'm a little bit under the standard, I'm all right with it as long as the dog functions right. So we can go down here um, just, to, just to make people out there mad, 100% Bulldog. All right, now we're under Emery's traits. If you remember what Roan had, he had E-M-E-M. -E -M. So we'll click on that. That's the same thing as it was before. Um, so chances are these two dogs, when they're put together, are going to produce some predominantly black dogs. Um, actually, we can go down a little further. There's a red um, allele. Rome did have red um, in his litter. We don't have to worry about that, I don't believe. We'll go down here to the other stuff. Now we want to look at coat length. She's also... GG, which means she's going to have a short coat. And once again, I can see that. The reason I can see that in these dogs and know that these test results are accurate is because I've had dogs with different results on the coat length as well as the muzzle length. And I can go outside and I can better understand those results and find them to be accurate because I have dogs that have different um, results. So if you're just testing one dog and you get results, you may not understand them 
as much as uh, I'm a visual type person, so it's very, once I see it, uh, it's easy to believe and understand. Um, so she's good on the, the length of her coat. So we should produce short coated dogs like I want. They'll all be short coated dogs compared to other breeds, but as far as American Bulldog go, there is thicker coats in this breed. Um, we go down a little bit more. She has a good tail length CC. She's going to produce pups with long tails, but if you go up above that to muzzle length, likely medium or long muzzle. Now, Roan had a CC. Now, Roan had a CC. She has an AC. So what does that mean? If you go down here and look, if a dog had two copies of the allele, he would have, he or she would have a short muzzle, and it gives, you know, uh, examples of breeds, English Bulldog, Pug, and, and Pekingese. This AC still, because I'm believing that the C allele is more dominant than the A, she's still likely to have a medium or long muzzle. Well, she's 16 months old, and I find that to be true. She is one of the shorter muzzle dogs that I have, but she's still capable um, of doing things, breathing, you know, uh, gripping, things like that with her muzzle. However, I would like it to be a little bit longer. So this is one that we're going to be looking at at the pups. You got an AC dog going to a CC dog. There's a good chance if you do the Punnett square, and I'm trying to do it in my head right now, the litter will probably be on average 50-50. 50 of the pups will be AC, 50 of the pups will be CC. So as long as one of the dogs that we hold back while we're waiting on the test um, is CC, that will be one. As long as everything else is equal, these traits will be the tiebreaker. So the other important thing, going back to body size and talking about body size, again, they test these five genes. You remember when we looked at Rones, he had four larger, one intermediate. Now what I haven't done is went and compared what's intermediate and what's large um, as far as on, on each genes. But I do know that she has 60% of her genes that they tested to be intermediate. That 100% correlates with what I see outside physically in my yard is a smaller dog. So we've had one dog that's got four larger, one intermediate. I see that that dog's larger. Muzzle uh, results seem to be accurate. This dog, you got three intermediate, two larger. I find that she's a smaller dog. Her muzzle is an AC. I find that her muzzle is a little bit wider and shorter than what Rones is, but still okay. And I have two dogs that develop that AC gene. That's Teleco and Emery, and they are my more shorter, wider muzzled dogs. And their muzzles appear shorter because they're wider. So I'm having, I'm believing that the AC um, result is not just a shorter muzzle, but also wider. And the wider muzzle, um, it appears a lot shorter than it actually is when you're viewing the dog from the front versus viewing them from a profile type view from the side. Um, I had a buddy of mine over here and we was looking at Teleco and Iris and Iris's muzzle appears to be a lot longer than Teleco's but when you get the tape measure out and you measure them you find that that's just not true. So the AC gene is not something that's just going to keep me from keeping the pup but I would like to see the cc's um, and now you've seen two dogs seen Memphis seen what she looks like there's a small picture in there nothing try to zoom in on it for you as you can see she's um, you, you can see her physical characteristics there so they had her they had her predicted adult weight at 62 pounds I found her to already be about 60 pounds at about 12 months old. So um, I don't feel like she was going to be a huge dog, um, but I do believe that weight was just a little bit off. She was probably about 55 pounds maybe. So um, anyhow, we'll go down. And once again, I love making people mad. 100% American Bulldog. We'll go back to the trait section. All right, now we're on the trait section. And um, 
she is a obviously a black dog but she still didn't develop the emem like um roan did if i'm not mistaken that's the same results as emery so anyhow what i wanted to go down and show y'all though was coat her coat length over here and you scroll over gt what does that gt mean the g causes a shorter coat like the boxers but the t offers a longer coat now that her coat wasn't long like a like a yorkie or a long-haired whippet but it was thicker um, to the touch than the dogs that i see that have the gg so the t i've had two dogs have similar coats that would be summit and memphis so again this is how i have been able to understand these results a little bit more is by getting different results and going out and physically um handling the dogs obviously you know we're out there with them all the time handling them um why is this trait important outside of just looks i do prefer the look of the shorter coat you can see the definition a little bit better on the dogs um as many bulldogs as i've ever owned you know talking about pit bulls and the bullies the amstaffs and now the american bulldogs i the american bulldogs like memphis and summit was the first ones i had seen with that thick coat when you touched memphis in the summer time her body was a lot hotter than what Neelands and Rones would be. So in the South in Tennessee, you know, I feel like having black dogs, which we have predominantly black dogs here, this is gonna benefit the, the dogs more in the summer. In the winter time, it's one of those things where, you know, we're probably really cold for a total of four or five weeks, and that's not necessarily um, back to back, you know. Um, it, it comes two or three days at a time. We might have a cold snap of two two weeks three weeks but you can always give them a little bit more feed to fatten them up also some bedding and things like that but in the summertime there's only so much you can do um, provide them shade and, and that's about it shade and water um, the other thing the other thing that i wanted to show y'all was body size now she has two intermediate and three larger the exact opposite of, of emery memphis was bigger than emory and then again this just goes to show that um, this proof to me that these results are accurate i know a lot of people don't believe in these types of tests but when you're reading them um, and you're getting your results and you and you can go outside and physically see them seeing is believing um, to me so it, it's proof so with that being said um, i think that'll wrap it up for this video um, they do have a performance thing. It's altitude tolerance and food, food motivation. I haven't broke a lot of those down. Um, the ones that I've went over are the ones that I've been mainly focused on. So with that being said, I hope that gave you a little bit of insight on the trait section and what we'll be doing. Um, now, once again, for those of y'all that stuck around, there may be a possible breeding in a litter at the end of February process is going to be different though because we're going to be waiting on these test results to get back before we make our selection because we will be keeping the dog off of it if the breeding happens and um, we're going to use this science to help us achieve our goals hopefully a lot sooner so anyways this is daniel i'm proud of the southland kennels until next time thank you all for watching